Hello friends. Welcome to my CitizenCon 2021 coverage. This will be the first of several videos covering the various panels, trying to dig through everything that was presented and get all the useful bits that we learned. Sorry for the wait on this, there's been quite a lot going on around here. Make sure to find the playlist down below containing all the videos. And please note, while I'll be reviewing the presentation a bit, this is mainly about the content learned. Enjoy. And thank you for coming to my tomato talk. And thanks to my newest Patreon members, Unknown Guardian, Thassos, and Jeremy Mancuso. Just a heads up, these will be a bit more casual than my usual videos, just so we can move faster and cover everything. This first panel, and basically the whole show, opened up with a pretty amazing cinematic of the Stanton system, and then the Pyro system, where we'll be going someday. While incredibly beautiful and a great show of the scale of the game, this was mainly the opening hype piece. Interestingly, the jump gate we know links Pyro and Stanton wasn't visible in any of the shots, and with conversations surrounding multiple exit jump points in the area, something we admittedly already knew about, some people are wondering about the jump gate's inclusion. It may have simply been too far away, but jump gates weren't mentioned or shown at any point in this convention, despite their importance in the subject matter. Now after this sizzle reel, we immediately jumped into the talking, and for the rest of the day there's going to be quite a bit of it. This panel was a bit weird in that it was described as being a guided tour of the current in-game universe, but then a massive amount of this wasn't in-game. Regardless, getting started here we can see the structure that makes up the jump point areas between the two star systems of Pyro and Stanton. Immediately obvious is the scale and bedazzle factor here. No really, the shapes of these clouds, the colors, are very specifically chosen. All of these features are meant to make players feel like they are flying somewhere truly beyond human understanding. The alien-like shapes of the clouds, whether peaceful or violent, the colors blue for good and red for drake, and the massive size of not just the large parent cloud which you will see on approach, but the small child cloud that you will actually interact with near the jump point. While none of this is new to the game, this segment gave an interesting insight into how their practices have improved in the construction of these major points in the game. From here we move to the space stations of Pyro. This showcased the interiors, exteriors, and general design decisions behind the stations. I was hoping that in a less populated system like Pyro, we would get some of the smaller, old style rest stops for added diversity. That being said, the amount of effort they are putting into truly differentiating the look and feel of the stations of Pyro vs Stanton is pretty astounding in just about every way, and likely one culprit of long production of the areas. This segment featured a whole bunch of concept art and a lot of lore talk, but not much on the gameplay ideas. What might be interesting is to know how they will handle ATC and territorial rules with the gangs, or how they plan to distribute these systems throughout such a large system, and why. These are some of the topics that maybe they could have touched on but they decided to skip over in order to talk more about the art of the system. As you'll see in my continued coverage, we'll get to see a new ship dedicated to helping small ships traverse large systems. But CIG didn't really take the opportunity to set up the necessity of that ship with this talk. I wish we had gotten to hear more about these gameplay ideas in this panel, but it seems the art is likely farther along at this time. We also got to hear about the decisions that go into creating this concept art for the stations. But like I said in my pre-CitizenCon video, given the primary audience here, concept art should likely have been less relied on. Despite having both the narrative and live game directors in this panel, we didn't get to hear too much about how these stations would affect their areas. The art shows these makeshift shanty towns that have formed around the space stations, a really awesome concept and something that speaks a lot to the population of Pyro, but there was never really actually any implications spoken of whatsoever about the game itself. And that really goes for everything that had to do with these stations. I think maybe a little more news about how these stations will differentiate for players from the Stanton system might have been nice. Now when we moved inside of the stations, it was mostly the same, but we did learn one or two things. Looking at these stations' interiors, it solidified the idea that Pyro will still be a populated system to some extent, with regular services and shops available to inhabitants. 
This may be different from the constant combat zone some may have pictured Pyro to be, much like you might find in other MMOs or some of these MMO lights. Now an interesting angle touched on here was that of exploration. Many, including myself, may be considering these locations for missions, combat, and black market activities. But derelict space stations will be a feature of Pyro, and with them come new areas to explore and discover new things, or people. Unfortunately, we could not get any real feels for what that might entail, because we didn't get so much as a sizzle reel. The bit of in-engine work that we did get to see regarding these stations gave a better understanding of an early view of how they may feel when we visit rest stops in the new system. Even in this early state without great lighting, the artist was able to build quite a nice scene with a small amount of additions. As an art segment, this was a nice quick look, and I'm glad we got some in-game insight into the location, finally. Speaking of in-game and lighting, we also got to see some of how these stations will be naturally lit by the different kiosks and stores that you'll find inside of them. This used some of the upgraded lighting that we've been hearing about in the monthly reports that will be referenced again in talks about Gen 12 later in CitizenCon. We continue to progress through this first two hour panel by moving on to some of the planetary tech that will go into the pyro system. While some of this segment was conceptual, there was a nice video which is confirmed to be shot in engine, despite what this guy in my stream said. And it showed off some of the diverse biomes of pyro, some of the newer planet tech features we were expecting to see at the event, such as rock formations like spires, little floating pancake things and these finger rocks, cloud tech, new height map improvements such as cliffs and higher resolution details, ship wakes, and improved ground scatter, aka less rocks everywhere. While confirming a lot of the planet tech based things we were expecting to see, this was a good peek at how much the planet tech has improved over the last year. Though quite a bit of what I liked here came from the sound, audio, and visual effects that I'm not so confident will be around when we get these locations. But we can always come back to this video later and compare. Now I feel this would have been a great place to move on to the gameplay demo, but instead they decided to go into more depth about the Planet Tech, which maybe could have been saved for the Planet Tech panel coming up to help with the length of this first segment. Regardless, we got to hear about planetary cloud tech, geological features, and organics. The cloud demonstration was yet another look at how ridiculous the planet tech is becoming in detail and capability, with artists able to define cloud shape, type, and density on a global scale. This of course falling in line with dynamic weather patterns and seasons that will be driving the clouds in the future. As usual, this is very advanced tech. It looks great and continues to push the boundaries and is already visible in-game at Crusader in older form and in Arena Commander in newer form. This was good insight into the cloud creation system and allows us to get an idea of what we can expect when clouds come to the game in the following year. The planet asset creation demo was also pretty interesting. We finally got to hear more about the progress being made with cliffs. It's still a ways away, but it's been a while since we got a good look at them. The organics demo showed the development cycle of a biome on Pyro 3. It has some amazing features and colors and was cool to see being made right in front of us. I sometimes get these moments where I think what they're showing looks good, but could be better. And then I realize I wasn't looking at the finished version. Funny enough, this also isn't the finished version. Planet Tech is one of the most exciting things about Star Citizen. It's always groundbreaking, always pushing the envelope, and almost never delayed. Unfortunately, it's only art. Next up is actually more art, but instead of sticking to the trend of in-game showcases that we started with station lighting before, we dropped back into concept mode. Much of what was actually art, we've already seen. The new outposts are an important topic, so I was a bit disappointed. That being said, we still learned some details here. These outposts are most definitely not the only other type of ground location we'll have besides cities. We had it confirmed here that we can expect villages and settlements that will fall in between these smaller outposts and the large cities we already know. Some of the ground-based work locations are at least being concepted with that gameplay in mind regarding base building in the future. You can see this here with the early model of the refining module for ground outposts, something that this tells us we'll be able to do on ships, in space stations, and right here at our ground bases. We'll hear more about these ground bases and the possibility of building them later on in my CitizenCon coverage. Moving inside the outposts, we got to see more concept artwork with some lore background. 
explanations for design decisions, ideas for what will happen, but generally a conceptual segment. What I did learn gameplay-wise was that these outposts will be split into archetypes based on what they are used for by the AI inhabiting the area, or in the future, us the players. I also appreciated understanding a bit about how these outposts will be categorized and organized for quick procedural generation in the future. While this may limit diversity, it'll make for more content more quickly. That was about it on the gameplay side. This segment was a lot of explaining, and largely conceptual and lore-based. Let it be said though, the process of watching a location go from manual paint, to color detail, to 2D elevation, to final concept, to 3D design, to lighting pass, and then later in my coverage to in-game, it just never gets old for me. Being able to watch the development of the game while at times has made me quite impatient has also been really nice and helped me understand games a lot more. This entire segment of the convention, in my opinion, was not the best execution though. I appreciate the idea of explaining Pyro and setting the stage for what it will mean, and love the slow transition into the gameplay, but I think this segment could have been broken up with more in-game videos. Not opening with any gameplay was a move, but going over an hour without any definitely got people antsy. It built anticipation, but I think it might have went too long. That being said, this has also changed my opinion of what Pyro means for the game. It seems like a much more significant expansion to the game than I previously thought. And while I'm excited for the new content this has shown, I hope Pyro isn't more than it needs to be at this moment. And much of this still feels quite far away with the concept art. It feels more solid than last time we saw Pyro, but it also still feels a bit behind what I would have hoped. Going off of just this panel, I wouldn't really expect to see Pyro earlier than Q3 of next year. This wraps up the first segment of my convention coverage. I'll be covering the gameplay segment in the next video. While I don't dive super deep into my own opinions during these videos, please feel free to jump over into my Twitch stream and ask me questions to my face. I have a lot more time to go into detail there and I'd love to discuss with you. For all the rest of the videos in this coverage, please find the playlist linked in the video description. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks to my top supporters, TK, Ken Garcia, Valiant15, The Alpaca, Holston Coop, The Huntress, Dasek, Guilty Conscious, Extreme Tuber7, El Gordo, Jarzy, Niku, Jin, Bilal Eliasem, and Brian Peterson.